Hey students, this is Mr. Galoya coming at you. Hey, we've been talking about free fall, acceleration. We've been talking about accelerations on ramps, incline planes, hills. So I'd like to uh, create another video here with kind of motion up and down a ramp. And uh, this is going to be really similar to what we discussed earlier with free fall. When we throw an object up and allow it to go up, 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 and then come on down. In this case, we've got a ramp, and we'll have the object kind of go up the ramp and come back down. I'd like to maybe subdivide this video up into four different segments or different parts. And so I want to first kind of talk a little bit about uh, just up and down motion on a ramp. And then I'd like to show you a method of finding the acceleration if we know the angle of the ramp which is a pretty common, often common thing we can determine about a ramp is the theta. Then I want to get onto Logger Pro and show you a video analysis of motion up and down a ramp and show you how that's really kind of connected into up and down free fall motion. Again, on that one I'm going to use Logger Pro video analysis. And finally, I'd like to work some practice problems. So I'll have these kind of four separate videos kind of connected into this one. This would be considered video two of this part of the summit uh, objective uh, on the ramp motion. So we've been really kind of talking about how the idea of free fall and ramp motion, really both of these phenomena were, are kind of connected and basically Galileo kind of worked in both of these areas you know and the idea of dropping an object dropping an object and getting that motion of that object we've kind of talked about with the the videos on free fall so maybe we start with an initial velocity of zero the object get, gets faster and faster and we really say well all objects, Galileo found then that all objects accelerate with an ex acceleration which we call little g. And the little, little g for our planet is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. So objects get faster and faster, they accelerate, they get faster. And, we, and then in the last objective on the summit, when we were kind of getting into free fall, I showed you kind of the graphs that we get, etc. Well, this is really kind of similar. What, what, what Galileo had really found is that this stuff happens kind of fairly quickly. And so he was able to kind of construct then these long ramps. And really the idea that we see with free fall down is kind of similar to what we see with an object. Again, maybe starting from rest. And the object then rolls down these inclined planes. The object gets faster and faster, right? But the action happens much slower, really. So Galileo was able then to do all of his research, really, without, um, you know, without accurate time, time pieces and clocks, etc. So this is kind of a similar idea. So. We really want to then kind of expand this idea and talk a little bit about, and we've already kind of mentioned this already with, with free fall up. So the object goes up and up and up, and then it reaches a point where it kind of stops, call that the apex, and then the object kind of comes on down. So we can talk about an object in free fall doing this complete motion. Well, in a similar way, we can talk a little bit about then giving an object an initial velocity. So that initial velocity is not zero, and that was the case here too, right? The initial velocity is not zero, but that object's going to slow down. Just kind of like what we're seeing here, the object slows down to a point which we call the apex. It's stopped at the apex. Well, that's kind of what we see with the ramp too gets slower and slower and slower if we if we push that object up the ramp or if we give that object an initial velocity then there's going to be a point that that object really has stopped again we call that the apex here 
and here you know it's just some sort of a velocity where the object is stopped then the object then will start coming back down and that's kind of what we see on this right side the object kind of coming on down so we see a lot of similarities and that's kind of what Galileo saw too a lot of similarities between throwing a ball up and allowing it to come down or complete free fall and then uh, motion on a ramp okay so a ramp really so if we could take you know a piece of wood or a metal beam or whatever we can call it a ramp so we can place that ramp maybe on oh, I don't know maybe a series of books so we can talk about that ramp having maybe a certain height okay which we can label H we can talk about the ramp having a certain length we can give that a symbol L now if we take that ramp and I mean okay before we do that we can talk about then the ramp angle theta and there's our theta and but we can take that ramp and if we put that ramp completely horizontal and place an object on that ramp as long as that ramp is is level there's not going to be any acceleration so there's no acceleration but there's really no angle either so we would call the angle then zero you know when we put the object on the ramp we know from what we've discussed that our objects going to accelerate so the acceleration here is not zero well the other extreme really for this ramp is we could put that ramp completely vertical and in this case then the object because the object is vertical it's not going to really make any connection with that ramp it's not going to stay on that ramp and again this object is going to get faster and faster but in this case then we would be in complete free fall right if there's no contact with the ramp the object would be in free fall well what's the acceleration there then well that's going to be g on our planet negative 9.8 meters per second per second well what can we really call the angle here well we can call the angle here 90 degrees so our ramp so our ramp angle theta can really then go between 0 and 90 degrees and our acceleration then can really go then between 0 and then g or 9.8 meters per second per second on our planet so there must be really some connection with our ability to define what this acceleration is and the use of this angle let's explore that a little bit here so let me maybe change my color here okay well let's construct our ramp again Okay, so there's our angle. Again, the ramp has a certain height, which we can label H. It's got a certain length then. We can label that L. So let's say we have the object up here on the ramp. It's not moving. If we had my fingers there, we could prevent it from moving. But once I release my fingers, then that object's going to accelerate and get faster as it goes kind of down down kind of the ramp does that kind of make sense really so the question is there is an acceleration it's not zero so what can we do really to find what that acceleration is well let me change kind of my colors here might be a little easier to see so let's take this sort of ramp and we really have a triangle here right well let's construct a similar triangle here So this triangle in red is really a similar triangle 
to the triangle that the ramp makes kind of with the ground in, the, in these books. And so the angle here, theta, must then be equal to the angle there. And in fact, these triangles are similar. If you want to think about it, you could take that triangle out and slot it right in here, right? It's similar. Okay, the angles are going to be the same. So what can we do then to find really what that what that theta is? Well, the downward, this downward vector here, if we were to just quickly remove the ramp, leave the object there, it would be completely in free fall. So we can say then that this, we can call this an acceleration vector triangle. So that hypotenuse, and that's the hypotenuse right here. See, this is my right angle. There's my hypotenuse, that's G. And the acceleration that the object will experience as it goes down the ramp is going to be this opposite leg here. So we'll call that A. That's going to be the acceleration. And there's several ways we can we can talk then about finding that A. Well, this theta, this is the opposite in the hypotenuse. So that would be a sine of the angle, right? So that's going to be acceleration over G. Or the acceleration will be then G times the sine of theta. All right, does that kind of make sense? So if we know what that angle is, if we know what that angle is, all we need to do is take the sine of that angle and take it then times g or 9.8 to get what that acceleration is. Now we'll have to make sure that your calculator is in degrees, all right, not in radians. So if I have a ramp then, if I have a ramp then that's horizontal, if my angle is zero, I put the sine of zero in and I get a zero for everything, so the A is zero. So if I have my ramp at 90 degrees, if I put 90 in here, the sine of 90 is one, or the acceleration is then just going to be G. Now, if you can't really get a protractor in here, or if you're not given the angle, maybe you can more easily find the height and then the length. So remember these triangles are similar, so we could also say then the sine of this the sine of this triangle here is the height h over the length l. Or we could say then that acceleration, so instead of using sine of theta, we can use then this h over l. So we can say, well, that the acceleration really is g times the expression h over l. All right. So we've got really two equivalent ways of getting that acceleration. If we know the angle, we can take the sine of that angle, take it times 9.8, or g, to find then the acceleration. Or if it's more easily done where we can measure, take a meter stick and measure the height and the length of the ramp, we can take that ratio, h to l, which is the sine of theta, and then take it times g to get our acceleration that way. Let's do maybe an example here. So let's say we've got a ramp here. Okay, we maybe put an object on there. And maybe we know the, the height, oh, I don't know, maybe... We take the height of this ramp and, I don't know, maybe it's 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters. And maybe we have a length of the ramp that's one meter. So this would be L, and this would be our height. And again, here's our theta. So again, we've got several ways we can find then the acceleration. We can say the acceleration is G times h over l. That's one way of doing it. So we could say then if we're doing this for our planet, 9.8 meters per second per second times the h, 0.25 over 1 meter. Again, these units would cancel. We're left then with an acceleration unit. So we would take our calculator and just basically say 9.8 
times 0.25. Okay, we would get an acceleration of 2.45 meters per second per second. So with a ramp constructed in this way, the acceleration would be bringing that object down at, or the acceleration would be making that object get faster and faster and faster and that acceleration would be 2.45. Now if we could get a protractor in there we could say well if we take then if we take then the inverse sine so if we say the sine of the angle equals 0.25 over 1 again the meters would cancel we could take an inverse sine to determine what that angle is. So we would take then inverse sine 0.25. We get around 14.5 degrees. So this same sort of ramp, if we could get a protractor in there, it'd be 14.5 degrees. We can measure it with the protractor. So we could take a protractor and put it in here and we would get then an angle of 14.5 degrees. And we could say well then the acceleration is g times the sine of 14.5 degrees. Remember make sure your calculator is in degrees here. So we could take then the sine of that angle and then take it times your 9.8 for our planet. Well, we get the same answer, right? Does that make sense? Because these are both really the same way of doing, of determining the acceleration. Okay, let's maybe just do one more example. Let's say we have a ramp. In this case, let's maybe, let's maybe tell you that, oh, maybe we have a 10 degree angle here. We place an object on here and we want to know, well, what is the acceleration? Well, so we would say then the acceleration is g times the sine of 10. Okay, at least for our planet then it would be 9.8 meters per second per second times the sine of 10. So we could take then the sine of 10 and then take it that times 9.8 we get around 1.7 meters per second per second. Okay. Notice then as your angle decreases, so as your theta, you know, gets smaller, that acceleration gets smaller, right? So here we had an angle of 14.5 degrees, our acceleration is 2.45. Here our angle is 10, we've dropped that acceleration. So as that angle gets less, or you might say as it, as it approaches 0 degrees, the acceleration approaches 0. You know, and we said then if our ramp's horizontal, if our angle is 0, then our A is 0. So as my ramp gets a bigger and bigger angle, Okay, I'm, I'm approaching now as my theta gets bigger, as I approach then the maximum angle I can have, which would be a vertical, that'd be theta equals 90. Then my A is going to increase, right? So my A is going to go up and up and up until we get an A of 9.8, or gravity, or free fall, acceleration due to gravity. Okay, does that kind of make sense how we can we can either use we can either use measurements we can measure the height and the length or we can determine that angle and we can determine what the acceleration is on that ramp now for an object then if we give that object you know let's just go back to this Let's just go back to this 10 degree angle here. So we said the acceleration is 1.7. So if we give that object some sort of initial velocity, 
then the acceler oops golly then the acceleration is going to be opposing that velocity and the object's going to the object's going to get less and less and less so the velocity will get less and less and less until the object then is stopped so in this case the acceleration is opposing that initial velocity so this is real similar to you know an object being thrown up in free fall in this case the g then is negative 9.8 and here then the acceleration is a negative 1.7 because the object is going against the that initial velocity once that object then reaches that maximum where its velocity here is zero, then it's going to start coming down, and that acceleration is going to make the object get faster and faster and faster. So that would be then similar to then the object coming back down, right? So we have motion up the ramp, similar to motion up, then motion down, similar to going back down the ramp. That acceleration, that acceleration though really doesn't change because we don't change the nature of the ramp itself. In one case that acceleration is opposing the motion and then in another case that acceleration is making the object get faster and faster. So we talked about this, we did a video analysis of a ball going up and up and up and coming back down and for the second segment of the video here of this video I'd like to do a video analysis of now motion up and down a ramp and show you how that's similar to up and down free fall motion. Okay so now that we've talked a little bit about going up and down on a ramp let's do uh, let's talk a little bit about the video analysis with Logger Pro the Vernier Logger Pro and so I can kind of do a video of an object going up and down a ramp. But I first want to kind of reacquaint you to what we saw with the video analysis uh, when we threw that ball up and allowed it to come down and the graphs that we got. So let's take a look at, you know, I did this for you the other day on one of the other videos. Um, but let's take a look at... Um, what we ended up getting. So this was when I projected that ball straight up and then I allowed that ball to come down. And this is the complete per, uh, parabola we got. Uh, this is a position time graph. So this is a position time graph for the ball going up. And so we, we said that the ball reached its maximum height around here and to the left of that apex really we have the ball going up and then to the right the ball coming down and when we do then a curve or a, 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 a some sort of an analysis a curve analysis on this parabola we ended up getting these coefficients and we said when we could double that a if we double that a we get a little bit more than minus 10 and you know theoretically it should be negative 9.8 which we're getting pretty close and then if we go to our VT graph this should make one complete linearity or one complete negative diagonal and we are at velocity zero right around here we would be at that highest point or the apex and if we then take a linear fit we think we should get then the acceleration or G which again negative 9.8 we're getting pretty close to that negative 10.26 alright so let me close this down and now let me kind of go in and show you kind of what I, I'm going to do here then so what I did is I have this metal ramp it's on this recycling bin I've got a meter stick here let me kind of show you the video here of what I did. I've already got it kind of processed. But so I basically pushed that card. I gave it an initial velocity, allowed the card to go up, and then it 
came back down. And I dotted the points going up, and then I dotted the points going down. Well, there's my position time graph. And you see this is an X here. Well, what I ended up doing is I basically reoriented the, the logger pro to make this the horizontal. So, but again, the key thing is we're seeing then this sort of parabola here. Now with the free fall, our coefficient was, you know, around negative five. When I multiply that by two, I get approximately minus 9.8. And here, when I go into analysis, again, it should be a quadratic or a parabola, and I can try my fit. Okay, so if I double that, if I double that a number, so it's 0.9455, oops, 0.9455 times 2, we get an acceleration of around 1.891. Okay, so that's given me my acceleration. Again, it'd be negative. As I push the car, I gave it initial velocity. It's getting slower and slower and slower. And finally, there was a point here that that car stops and then comes back down. So again, it's the same type of shape as we saw with free fall up and down. And that's what I've been trying to say, I guess, in this video. and. Uh, and maybe in the previous video, is that Galileo um, had a hard time measuring and seeing the effects of true free fall. So he creates these very uh, low angle ramps so he could see the same really effect. It's just that now our accelerations are much smaller. But we see the same graphs. So if I go into my velocity time graph, oops got the wrong one here. Velocity time graph, I should see again one linearity. And here would be the point of its maximum height up the ramp, where its velocity is zero. So if I'm back here, that should be around, what, 1.2 seconds. And, oops, and that's what we're seeing, around 1.2 seconds. So this would be motion, this area would be motion up the ramp, that'd be motion down the ramp. We should make one complete then diagonal, and that slope again, that slope again is going to be the acceleration. So on the previous graph, I got around 1.891, and here I'm getting negative 1.88. So it co corresponds pretty closely to what we're seeing with the position time graph. All right. Now, so we're getting an acceleration of around 1.9. Now, let me go back to, let me kind of go back here. So, we're seeing really, we're seeing the same types of graphs. Does that all kind of make sense? We're seeing parabolic, full parabolas, bottom opening parabolas with the position time graphs, and diagonals, negative diagonals negatively inclined diagonals with the VT graph. So let me go back to my document here. So I just previ previously said that we could get the acceleration if we know the ramp angle or if we know the height and the length. Well, in this case, let's kind of work backwards here. Can we determine what that ramp angle is? Well, we said that the acceleration, we said the acceleration here is around 1.9 negative. Let's just, let's just take that to the tenth. So our acceleration is 1.9 meters per second per second. So could we calculate the angle of that ramp I had? Well, we can just kind of work backwards, right? So we could say then A equals G sine theta. 
So our acceleration, our g, and then we're going to have sine theta here, right? So we'll take our 1.9 divided by a 9.8. Notice our negative signs cancel. So 1.9 divided by 9.8. Okay, we get around 0.194. My units cancel, and that's going to equal the sine of theta. I take an inverse sine. Again, make sure your calculator's in degrees. So I'm going to take an inverse sine, and I get around 11 degrees. So I'm predicting my ramp angle should be around 11 degrees. Now I didn't really measure this, I just created the ramp in the video. Uh, what I'm saying is if we could put a protractor in there, we could kind of put a protractor in there, we could get, we would determine that that angle is around 11 degrees. Now there may be another way, in fact there is really kind of another way we can look at this. So um, let me change colors here. Okay, so here we go. And so here was my kind of ramp, right? So I'm thinking my angle should be around 11 degrees. I can't really go back now and measure that. However, we also said then that we could also say A equals G times H over L, where this is the height and this is the length. So again, we're, we know the acceleration is negative 1.9. Our G is negative 9.8. We have H then over L. Well, the ramp that ramp is a Pasco ramp, it's 2.2 meters. And so what we can do then is we can say, well, our 1.9 divided by 9.8, and then we could take it times 2.2. We think we should get a height of around 0.43 meters. Okay, well, well Logger Pro there's a command on Logger Pro we can use. Let me kind of show you what this is. So let me go back to this Logger Pro. And here's the, here's the edge of the ramp right there. So if I take and choose this command and go kind of from the floor upward, we think ideally we should be about 0.3 meters. And I'm getting about 0.47, which is pretty close. Okay, so overall, what do I really want you to pick up here from this, this segment of this video? Well, that the graphs that we see with ramp motion up and down are real similar. In fact, they're really the same. It's just different, different numbers, really. We get, we get a parabola here on position time, and that's exactly what we saw with free fall up and down on our position time, a full bottom opening parabola. And then on our velocity time graph, we're seeing a diagonal. That's exactly what we saw with the VT graph going up and down. It's just that now my slopes still means acceleration, but now my values are going to be less than 9.8 meters per second squared. In the next part of the video, I'd like to then work a few practice problems with you. Okay, well let's do the last kind of part of the video and that would be maybe working a few kinematic problems involving ramps. So again this is going to be real similar to what we saw with free fall up and down. The only exception is we really have kind of a ramp here. And so I don't know, maybe we have a ramp and in this case let me give you what that ramp angle is. I don't know, maybe uh, 7 degrees. And we're going to give an object maybe an initial velocity here, maybe, I don't know, 3 meters per second. And that object's going to go up and up and up the ramp, but it's going to be getting slower and slower. 
and there's going to be a point then that uh, that object will be be at rest really so that we can call that maybe our final velocity zero and that ramp with that angle is going to create then that acceleration that's going to make that object get slower and slower so we said then the acceleration let me maybe change colors here we said then that that acceleration is going to be g sine theta so if I tell you what that angle is we can then determine what that acceleration is so the acceleration would be not minus 9.8 meters per second per second sine of 7 degrees make sure you know, you know your calculators in degrees and not in radians so we would hit sine of 7 times your 9.8 and I get 1.2 so the acceleration would be negative 1.2 meters per second per second alright well if we know what the acceleration is then we can go in and find things like how how far up the ramp will it go we could figure out time for example how much time it will take before the the object stops well let's just say we're not sure what time is which we really don't yet and we can maybe start with our combination or our timeless equation okay and let's call maybe this a reference point and this would be then our final position where the ball stops so our final velocity would be zero our initial was three our a we calculated over here oops yeah and then we have x sub f that's that would be how far up the ramp it goes so we'll take our three we square that that's nine we'll divide that by two and then divide that by 1.2 okay so we get an x sub f is 3.75 meters okay those negative signs will cancel and we're left with 3.75 so we're saying that ball is going to get slower 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 and then around 3.75 it would have stopped okay so now maybe something else something else we could determine we could say well how much time would it take for that object to go that far well oh what happened there I lost my temporarily lost my paper here so we were saying we could figure out the time it would take to go from here to there and for that really a, a good way of doing it would be the how fast equation okay we knew that final velocity was zero the initial was the acceleration and there's our time so we could take our 3, put it on the other side, divide that by 1.2, and get about 2.5 seconds. Okay, so it's going to take 2.5 seconds to go up, and then 2.5 seconds to come down. So if the question said, well, how, how much total time would it take? you could say five seconds 2.5 up 2.5 down so we've calculated the acceleration we've calculated you know how far up it goes we've calculated how much time it takes you know maybe maybe instead of a ramp like this maybe we have I don't know maybe this ramp is one meter high and two meters long so h would be one meter our length would be two and I tell you oh I don't know maybe I tell you that the object the object goes up the ramp before it stops that object goes up the ramp 1.75 meters
So it's got some sort of a final velocity here of zero. It's got some sort of an initial velocity here of some number. We're not sure what that is. So that's going to be my question mark. We'd like to know maybe, well, how, how much velocity do I have to give the object initially to go that far up the ramp before it stops, given that the ramp is one meter high and total of two meters long? Well, we really need to find that acceleration, right? So we could say, um, well, there'd be several wa really ways we could do that. We could say, well, your VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A X sub F minus X sub I. If we call this a reference point, then this term will go away. Our V final is zero. We could solve the A that way. So we could say zero equals no, no, now hold on. So see, we're, we don't know what that VI is. We don't know what that VI is yet. And we don't really know what the acceleration, so we have two unknowns. We know what the final position would be. So let's actually use one meter and the two meters to find the acceleration. So we said then we could say acceleration really is g sine theta. Or we could say g times h over l. So our acceleration would be then 9.8 negative times h 1 over 2. We have a meter here and a meter there, and it just cancels out. So we have 1 half of 9.8. Our acceleration is going to be negative 4.9. OK, now that we know that, we can substitute that in here. Okay, so we'll take our 1.75, take it times 4.9 times 2. We would get 17.15. Our negative signs will cancel, and we have to take a square root. We get about 4.14. So we're saying, we're basically saying here then that I would have to I would have to give that ball an initial velocity of 4.14 meters per second. If I did that, if I did that then, the object would go up 1.75 meters on a ramp that's one meter high and two meters long. So again, there's different ways you can work through these problems. I've given you a couple of examples. You also could, we also could, let me get, get an, let me scroll down a little bit maybe and choose a different color. Well, let's choose that color maybe. We also have our how far equation. And we could get that involved also. Let's maybe try to get a problem involved maybe with that. So we have a ramp here and what can we do here for that? Oh, I don't know, maybe let's call this x sub i is zero. This is our final position. vi, vf is zero. Oh, I don't know, let's maybe give it a push of 5 meters per second. And let's say, oh, I don't know, maybe the time it takes to go up before it stops is, oh, I don't know, maybe 2 seconds. Okay, and we need to figure out, we need to actually maybe give you what that acceleration is. So let's maybe say we have a ramp that's, oh, I don't know, 12 degrees. 
Okay, so we have a 12 degree ramp. It takes two seconds for the ball to go up. It starts off at five meters per second. Let me change my colors here. So let's determine what that acceleration is first because we'll need it over here. So the acceleration would be g times the sine of theta, 9.8. Meters per second per second times the sine of 12. Okay, so put the sine of 12 times my 9.8. Well, I get maybe 2.04 meters per second per second. Okay, so now I think we're ready to figure out what this x sub f is. This would be 0 meters plus 5 meters per second times 2 seconds plus 1 half. Now this again would be a negative acceleration because it's opposing that initial velocity. And we have then the two seconds. I need to square that. So I'm left here with zero meters and 10 meters. That's from this term. And we have 0.5 times 2.04 times 2 squared. Okay, change the signs of that and add 10 to that. I get around a final position of around 5.92. So meters. So the object here is going to go up, 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 stop, just a little shy of 6 meters. That's when I give it an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. It does that motion for two seconds. Alright, so that's basically how you might work a few of these problems. We can use our how fast equation, our combination equation. We're using then a way of getting that acceleration if we know the angle. Or maybe if we know the height and the length, we can get it that way. Or we can maybe use our how far equation in some way. So a bunch of different types of questions that they could ask. And, you know, just remember, you know, you've got different types of kinematic equations to kind of help you. And sometimes they, they, might, they might ask for how fast was the object initially, uh, how fast was it initially going, etc. They might ask you to find the time we've done that, or maybe find the acceleration through some sort of a way of doing that. Okay, I hope that helps, kids. We'll talk to you later.